Hi guys, Matthias here and welcome back to another video on the Apple Silicon technology. So a few days ago Apple announced a new M2 Pro and the M2 Max and uh, as always Apple throws a lot of numbers at us but in today's video I just want to break down a little bit regarding the tech specs of these new computers and uh, what it really means for you as a user and uh, also talk about my experience of using the M1 Max 32 gigs version. 14-inch uh, computer for about a year now and I've been using it for music production, video editing, 3D rendering, graphics design and also for coding and uh, compiling. So without further ado, let's take the tour. Right, so let's begin looking at the press release here from Apple and apparently the new MacBook Pros will be up to six times faster than the previous uh, Intel-based uh, MacBook Pros and support up to 96 gigs of unified memory. The M2 Pro and M2 Max also featured a Liquid Retina XDR display and all the ports you need. Well, uh, that's not uh, actually right because uh, you can never get enough ports. On the M1 Max here that I actually recorded this video on, I have uh, three Thunderbolt ports. And uh, to be honest, you actually have to have a lot of USB hubs to connect all your external SSD drives and uh, cameras and uh, audio interfaces, etc. Now, if you want some uh, tips on what kind of USB hubs uh, you can connect to the MacBook Pro, I did a video on the Thunderbolt 3 dock core, which I think is an excellent addition to connect to the M1 Max or the M2 Max. Right, so let's continue here and with the M2 Pro you get 200 gigs of memory bandwidth but with the M2 Max you get up to 400 gigs of memory bandwidth. And as I mentioned earlier you get up to 96 gigs of unified memory. I already did a video on the unified memory system of the Apple Silicon but in general it operates like it has double the amount of memory compared to an Intel computer. On the M2 Pro you get up to 12 cores CPU, 19 cores uh, of GPU. And on M2 Max we get the 12 cores CPU and up to 38 cores of GPU. I mean, who uses that kind of uh, processing power for GPU? Since uh, on most uh, Macs or for most uh, Mac users you're probably not going to use this at a gaming computer. You're probably using it for work like uh, maybe graphical design or uh, video editing. The M2 Pro supports up to two external displays and uh, the M1 Max and the M2 Max supports up to four external displays. You can also see that uh, with the M2 Pro you get up to 23 streams of 4K ProRes video playback and uh, that's a lot. You're probably not going to use this many streams. Only if you're working like in the professional TV series but I don't think you're, you're ever going to have that many streams going on at the same time. And with M2 Max, 4 displays and up to 10 streams of 8K ProRes playback. And that's the insane amount of throughput data at the same time. Okay, so back to my experience with using the M1 Max for video editing and video rendering. I've uh, been using this now for about uh, a year and I've never had any issues with uh, either editing or rendering. As you can see in this product where I have like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Uh, yeah, six uh, tracks of 4K video footage at the same time here. And uh, the M1 Max just ticks along well here and, and you can scrub and, and play wherever here and it just starts the playback without any issues. And the rendering is obviously super quick here, so we can take this as an example. It's a 1 minute 20 seconds video. Let's go to the export screen and we're going for QuickTime H264 4K resolution, 25 frames. Restrict to 80,000 kilobits per second. Hi, K back. So that's like uh, my usual settings for, for the export. And let's uh, add to the render queue and press render. And we are done. 29 seconds, the same as uh, the previous export. Now you probably also heard some bad rumors regarding the internal storage of uh, the Apple Silicon computers. But I can tell you that I've been doing some heavy uh, transfers of the big files and uh, recorded over like a hundred videos uh, this past year and uh, a multitude of uh, albums and songs. So there's been a pretty heavy write and read to the internal disks of uh, the MacBook Pros and none of these uh, either the M1 or the M1 Max had had any disk issues just to let you know that uh, at least I haven't experienced any storage issues. 
Right, so let's talk about battery time. I feel that the original M1 and also the M1 Max here have uh, extremely nice uh, power efficiency and uh, battery time. But uh, apparently this new 14-inch model will have up to 18 hours of video playback and 12 hours of wireless browsing, while the 16-inch model will give you up to 22 hours of video playback and 15 hours of wireless web browsing. And that is a lot. Personally, I often bring the MacBook Pro M1 Max to the couch to make some music production or sound design while watching some Netflix or HBO or something. Right, so connectivity. On the M2 Pro and on the M2 Max, you have two Thunderbolt ports on the left side and one Thunderbolt port on the right side. On the left side, you also have the MagSafe 3 port for connecting the power adapter and the headphone jacket. And on the right side, you have the HDMI port, that additional Thunderbolt port, and finally the SDXC port for connecting your SD cards from your video cameras. The MacBook Pros with the M2 Pro and the M2 Max also features the Magic Touch button, the Touch ID button, which makes it super easy to log in and unlock your Mac and also purchase stuff on, on the App Store, so that's just uh, super convenient. Now to summarize, I'm uh, really intrigued by the Apple Silicon technology, as you've seen from my previous episode, and I'm very excited on the new M2 generation CPUs too. And it's super hard to not push that uh, buy button on, on the Apple website for the M2 Max, which I will probably do in any day here. Right, so finally, what do you think about the M2 Pro and the M2 Max? Please let me know in the comments, any questions or feedback. Right, so if you missed out on any of my previous episodes on the Apple Silicon technology, I highly recommend you to go and watch them, because there's plenty of nice uh, like performance tests, so that you can see that uh, the new tech is uh, really awesome. Now you can continue and watch my next episode. Thanks for watching today and see you in the next one. Bye. Oh, by the way, did you watch the new uh, The Last of Us series on HBO? It's uh, truly amazing and a great uh, adaption from uh, the game series. And uh, I can't really wait to see the next episode. It's just truly sad that HBO chose not to release the full series in one go and only release like one episode every Monday or, or something. So let me know in the comments what you think about the new The Last of Us series.